Hello and welcome back to the Doctor Who Marathon. I'm your host, Mickey Dam, and today we're going to be talking about The Macra Terror, written by Ian Stewart Black and originally directed by John Davis. However, no episodes survive in the BBC archives, but thanks to To Entertain, we have a fully recovered um, HD coloured animation directed by Charlie Norton. Now, before I even get into the story, just something to note. Whilst I'm recording this episode, which is the 14th of April, it is actually the 30th anniversary of the, the, the new Who story, Gridlock, which also features our giant crabs that feature in this story. So it's just a strange coincidence. But obviously when you watch this, it is somewhere in June, if I remember my dates. But I digress. Everybody has praised this story up the ass. And yes, I'm one of them. <laughs> this one is a great example of having your, having your uh, politically themed story whilst keeping it a great suspenseful story. And it really, and just everything about the writing in this story, at least most of it anyway, is just so good. Um, but um, to say that it's perfect, I mean, it does have some issues, but the uh, most are nitpicks. So what, what do I mean by that? Now, so yeah, this story, it it's basically the Doctor and the crew that consists of Ben, Polly and Jamie. They land on a planet where they have um, this colony and everybody is happy, happy, happy. And they play music and they have a band and stuff and everything's so cheerful. Now, this kind of story would have set perfectly in the 80s. 80s do a lot of stories like this where our main villain is hiding behind... Um, like a group of people that everything is just so happy and calm and and it's and there's always somebody trying to like tell everybody to be happy, nobody be sad kind of thing. So this might, if you took the story on its own, you might feel, right, this story feels really 80s. But this came out in 1965, I believe. Um, 1967, sorry. 1965, what am I on about? But anyway, so... It's very ahead of its time and it really works really well. And it's got that really catchy music. Um, I can't remember what the band song, I can't remember what it's called, but if you've seen the story, you know what I'm on about. And like when they go and meet everybody, everybody's so happy and cheerful, except for this one guy who's on the run from the police of, of the colony and he basically believes that there are these giant crabs that are going around. And for some reason, they keep calling them insects, giant insects, and not giant crabs, which I guess is fair enough for people in the colony because maybe they don't know what um, crabs are. Maybe crabs are an animal that's long been uh, extinct in their end times. But why do Ben and Polly and Jamie also call them big insects? They're crabs, okay? It's so clearly crabs. And and whilst they're there, they find out that like um the doctor slowly discovers there's um um there's like a hypnotism kind of thing going on. It keeps everybody basically slaves um to the system where they have a TV with a picture of this guy called the controller, and he basically tells everybody to use to do their jobs basically and and not to stray from from the norm and whilst it's here Ben becomes um controlled like that now I thought it was very clever that Ben um was so quick into it um it seems like a lot of the the theme in is authority and how most authorities like the like the police are just mindless brutes that go that just do their the job without really thinking about it. Now Ben, he's his his character is that he's a he's a navy navy um cadet. He he worked in the navy, and so it makes sense for him to basically be controlled by the system. And 
slowly he becomes conflicted between his service for the colony and his service for the Doctor. So ben, this story does have a lot of great Ben moments um, if uh, when you're watching it through his story arc. Um, but Jamie and Polly, they don't get hypnotised. Now, it's Polly again gets a bit undermined here, which I'm really disappointed in. Um, it just seems like she has very similar stories to Jamie, only Jamie gets the more action. He gets more conflicted with with the macra, and when Polly gets confronted, she's always going to have to get saved by someone, but um, Jamie has a more one-on-one -on -one concentration with them. And so, really, they, they do have like very similar plot points, but because of that, Polly kind of gets sidelined a bit but Jamie Jamie has ve is very good here you you can see how his his basically his simplicity of him being a character from the past really works to Ian Stewart Black's strengths as a writer and the doctor he is full on what you think the doctor is saying no to authority and there's a great bit that's actually taken out of the animation because it was too hard to animate where you have our characters um they take their have like a clean up and stuff and ben and polly are like they're going along with it and all happy and stuff and jamie's kind of like 50 50 on it but the doctor really isn't happy with the fact that like they're changing his clothes and cleaning him up so it, the story does have a lot of humorous moments as well especially with um how the Doctor so clearly plays with the fact that um, his character, they call the pilot, he's so, like, charming to their faces and and there's, like, hiding this big, like, secret that the colony is, like, mind-controlled. And so the Doctor really, like, plays to it. So, you, again, a lot of colony elements, comedy elements, but they don't undermine the bigger story here, which is the mind-control of these giant crabs that um, might have been a bit silly when you say it out loud like that, but the, the, the structure of it, the plotting, the, the themes that the story explores, like how media basically makes things, everything seem happy and charming and, you know, don't, don't worry about, about life. Just be happy, happy, happy and do your job. Don't think. Just, just go along with it. It... It might feel a bit heavy-handed for for audiences now, but no, it seriously does work. It is, it's really fantastic. I'm finding making these videos. Um, I find it personally really hard when I get the story that I really love, because it's like I'm not really like deconstructing it. I'm just saying, oh yeah, I love this. 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 Like, like Ben's um, plot, and you know. I think I've stated it before. I love it with mind control stories, like with um, Ian being mind controlled in that one story in The Keys of Marinus, and now Ben, this one, which really works. It's basically, throw that Key of Marinus episode, if you haven't seen it, please watch it. It's an hour long. But that one episode of Key of Marinus, I said it's so good, it should have been its own story. This is that story. This is what I wanted. And. Yes, just thank you. Thank you, uh, Ian Stewart Black. So, yeah, this story really plays up to his strengths. And it really, really works. And I've just realised that I haven't really, like, deconstructed it, really. I can't... It's hard for me to go into detail, really, without going, right, this bit is so cool. This bit is great. I love this bit. I love this bit. So... Uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't know where to go with this. This is a very awkward video. I do apologise. Um, let's talk about the animation, shall we? Now, the animation here is by... It doesn't say... It doesn't say. But it's, um, it's the more modern um, animation style that they've been doing a lot in recent years. I think this one came out in 2019. And they've done it for a few other Patrick Troughton stories. And they've done it for um, a fourth Doctor story called Sharda. But I'm 50-50 I'm on it. 
it looks a bit too cartoonish for my liking and I wasn't I wasn't keen on how little they try to imitate Patrick Troughton's performance now don't get me wrong Patrick Troughton is like a unique bottle that nobody can really touch so I completely understand that they didn't even like attempt to copy his movements and stuff but when you watch the story it is clear that it's not Patrick Troughton's movements which um you know Patrick Troughton's second doctor is his his doctor's very visual and it's very like that's like one of his big character moments is that his his movements and stuff and how he plays the fool and just and you can always see it in his face that even when he's the fool he still has a, like a darker side and vice versa when he's a darker side you can always tell he's inside he's this character who loves adventure and fun but it doesn't really come off very well in the animation and it if I, in my opinion it doesn't even look like him that that well but uh, a, it's in colour, so, you know, it's much more visually interesting than maybe what it would have been if you're into someone who doesn't like black and white 60s television. I personally do. I personally love the look of the 60s, but for those of you who don't, then maybe this is a better alternative. And it's also shot, it's also made in a, in a wider screen, because... Originally, the 60s episodes were shot like in a more like, like a uh, triangle shape. So there's something to note as well. And it's in HD as well. So the images look very crisp and clear. But it does, it feels like a completely different entity. And it doesn't really, it doesn't give off the 60s vibe that I personally like about um, this era of the show. It feels much more like a modern story in terms of visuals. And there's also, we've got to talk about is the visuals to, to the sound. Dialogue wise, I think it's all right. They match the lips up fine and the movements. But sometimes like, like when the macro are moving and stuff, I don't think the sounds really work that well. Like there's one that like crashes from the floor and there's one that like smashes through the, through the floor. And the sound effects only lightly touch on it. So it does come really awkward in certain moments. And you can, it might have been better off if they added some sound effects for the certain scenes. So, you know, there's, there's that to consider. And, and also as well, they did, they did the... New intro. Oh, I forgot to mention this story um, introduced a new intro to the series, which obviously is um, they animated it in color. Which I really like the color of the of the of the new sixties title in this one because it's they harpen back to the color scheme of John Pertwee's first story, our uh, first opening. So it does feel like a, like a natural progression now if you watch it in in order of their release but that's just rambling but yeah I really like the I really like the Patrick Troughton intro um that was introduced here it that's like the one I think of when I think of Patrick Troughton and it's the first one that introduced the face motif where they have the doctor's face in the intro something that the first intro didn't have so it's a big it's a big important moment in Doctor Who intros if you're interested in that so, yeah, this, this video is probably really short. I do apologise. Um, basically, watch the Macro Terra. If, you're, if you don't mind it not feeling like 60s, I, I, I do actually recommend the animation. It's very crisp, it's clean, it gives it a new visual style. Because it's, not, because it's animation, it's not bound by sets. So when I'm like, outside, you've got like a big landscape in the background and you've got... The city on the outside, when it's like outside of it, looks absolutely stunning. But it, like I said, it doesn't have the sixties vibe, so you're missing that. You're missing out on that. So just watch it any way you can. But I don't know. There you go. So that's the Macro Terra. Can't really 
just just go watch it. I can't really describe why it's so good. But yeah, sorry, this video is really boring. So join me next time where we will watch I have I have I can't remember what the next episode is. I believe it's the faceless ones. Maybe. I think so. So join me next time on the Doctor Who Marathon where we'll find out what what the next story is. So join me next time on the Doctor Who Marathon.